Good afternoon. My name is Justin Abbott and I'm here with Zip Products today to show you how to install a new electronic tack drive in your older mechanical tack. It is Zip Item D1017 and it can be used from 53 to 62 and 65 to 74 Corvettes. Now I know I skipped the 63 and 4 Corvettes, but before you say I forgot those, unfortunately the D1017 will not work on those two-year Corvettes and it is because of the cone-shaped tachometer in them. So if you're a 63-4 owner who wants an electronic tack, please look at our new Dakota Digital Gauges. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to want to remove the tack from the dash of your Corvette. Once you've done this and it is removed, go ahead and remove the metal gauge on the back of the tack and this is where we're going to start the video today from that point on. So here I have a 69-71 to 71 tachometer and the first thing you're going to do is you're going to remove the needle. Now the trick to doing this is you're just going to take and pinch the needle right under the center of it. And it'll pop off. You don't want to move it sideways because what you'll do is you'll end up breaking the shaft inside the needle. All you're going to do is when you pinch it you're applying pressure under the needle and face until it pops off. You don't want to put anything under there and pry it because you will scratch the back plate if you do that some needles will be a little bit more difficult than others but just take your time with it and it'll, it'll come off so once you've done that then you're gonna see that you have two black screws on the face alright you want to be careful when you're doing this because you definitely don't want your screwdriver to slip and scratch the face but what we're going to do is go ahead and unscrew those now you can reuse these screws but the D1017 kit will come with brand new ones that you can use. Most of these screws uh, seem to turn a little rusty brown on the original tacks, so you'll get nice new black ones with the D1017 kit. And it's as easy as that. This is the mechanical part of the tack. You're going to discard this, and the only thing that you're going to be reusing is the face and the needle. So we'll put that to the side for a minute and we will go ahead and unpack our D1017 so we can see what it comes with. Okay, so now that we've got it unpacked, you can go ahead and tear open your hardware bag here. Well, let's see what fasteners it comes with. Here's our two little new black face screws, which we're going to use for the face to the D1017, but it also comes with new rubber bushings and screws that attach the tack unit itself to the metal backing on your gauge assembly once you put it back together to reinstall it into the dash. So looking at our D1017, if we look at the instructions, there's two settings on this, and these are very important. So we need to make sure that these are set properly now. And it's the dip switches in the back. Now, if you have a conventional V8 engine, you're going to set your dip switch 1 to on and 2 to off. Now, if you are converting a older Corvette to an LS engine, you know, LS1, LS2, LS3, LS6, LS7, LS9, any of the LSA motors, LSX motors, anything that's using the coil per cylinder setup on the LS, you're going to want to set the dip switch 2 to on and the 1 to off, exactly opposite of how the D1017 ships. And the reason for that is the LS engine considers the ignition system as a four cylinder and not a V8. So with those set, what we're going to go ahead and do is position our gauge face. And the way I normally do this is I put my, there's the adjusting block right there to fine tune it. I usually put that on the right. And then I go ahead and bolt the face down. These are small screws, so it can be a little tricky. You just take your time. And then they don't have to be real tight, just snug them up. You definitely don't want them loosening up while they're in the car. And just snug. You don't need to use any Loctite or anything like that on them. It's, if you ever have to take it apart, it'll make it almost impossible. 
So right now, our gauge face is on, okay? But you don't want to put the needle on yet. What you're going to want to do first, uh, before you install the needle, is you're going to want to power the gauge up so that it will register the gauge to zero RPMs. At that point, you're going to go ahead and install the needle. And at this point, we're going to move over to the next video where we are going to use the Zip Products calibration tool, part number TL182, and calibrate our electronic tachometer. I'm here at Zip Products to show you that our new TAC calibration tool, part number TL182. This can be used on all aftermarket electronic TACs and the factory OEM TACs in the Corvette to set the correct RPM before you install the tachometer in the vehicle. Uh, using this tool, you will have to have a power supply of 12 volts, but you will not need to hook anything up to the tack to the vehicle in order to calibrate it. It will allow you to do it on the bench, which I'm gonna demonstrate here for you right now. So the first thing we're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna get some, some test leads like what I've got right here. And today, since I'm on the bench, I am using a uh, a converter, 12 volt converter to uh, power the tack. You can use a 12 volt battery if need be, 12 volt battery box, anything that will supply 12 volts to it. So right now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and set our needle to install it at zero. So what we're going to do is we are going to power our tachometer on, but not connect the green signal device. And let's make sure we got these little guys separate so they're not touching. Okay, so right now my gauge is powered on with no signal coming into it. So theoretically it should be at zero. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and place our needle. And don't push down too hard on it. You don't want to, uh, to bend the shaft, but just a little bit of pressure. For right now because we may need to pull it back off all right so we are going to go ahead and we are going to hook up our tl182 gauge driver now i'm not going to need test leads for this because luckily for me i can hook right here up to these power leads and as you see the gauge driver comes on it's already set, which is the lower numbers, to a 50% duty cycle, and I recommend that you leave it right there. All the functions of it will work perfectly at 50%. All right, now, according to our instructions for the TL182, we have several settings here. And this is where we can calibrate our tachometer at. All right, so we have our negative and power source, and then the green wire is our signal, which also matches the wires that are on the D1017. So the way this thing calculates RPM is the same way your ignition system does. It reads hertz, or this outputs hertz. So any hertz setting, which is, which is what the ignition system is, or at least what the tax side of it is reading, uh, will be the same no matter what. So whatever this is outputting, is going to read the same when it comes from your ignition system. So we're going to start at 100 hertz. 100 hertz should be 1500 RPMs on a V8 engine. It'll be 3000 on an LS. All right, so as you can see, we're at about 1600 RPMs here. All right, now most electronic gauges in the OEM vehicles are off as much as 10%. Now, obviously, we want to try to get it as correct and close as we can here. In my own vehicle, I would rather have the tack mostly accurate or as accurate as possible at the high RPMs versus the low RPMs, okay? So 10% at 700 RPMs idling is 70 RPMs. That's not a big deal. And most of these older Corvettes have a little bit of cam in them anyways, and they're already fluctuating more than that, okay? It's 6,000 RPMs, that can be as much as 600 RPMs. So if you only think you're going 6,000 RPMs on your shift and you're actually doing 6,600 RPMs, that could be life and death of your motor. So what I'm telling you right now, when I do these tacks, is I calibrate the red line. 
and then I come back and set my low RPM. So at 6,000 RPMs, we're gonna be at 400 Hertz. So as you can see, the buttons on the TL-182 allow me to adjust the Hertz right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold it down and run it up to 400. And as you can see the background, you see the tack moving. So we can see that this tachometer was well, 275, 300 RPMs off at 6,000 RPMs. All right, that's more than what I would like it to be. Less than 10%, but more than where I want it on the red line. So what we're gonna do is take our little screwdriver and we're gonna go into this adjusting pot and we're gonna set this at 6,000 RPMs. Right there. Now, 400 Hertz will always be 6,000 RPMs on a V8. So you don't need to adjust this to get to 6,000. We are adjusting the tack to where it reads at 400 Hertz. All right, let's go back and check 100 and see where we're at. Okay, so we're about a little over 100 RPMs off. Okay, less than 10%. Quite honestly, for me, I would be just fine with that right there. Now, some people want it a little bit closer than that. So what we can try to do is you can disconnect this right here and let's give a sanity check and see if it reads zero. All right, we are reading about 75 RPMs. So what we can do here is actually pull the needle back off and reset the needle to zero. All right, this is why we didn't push it down real tight the first time. Now remember when you're doing this, you can't push in on it and turn it because it's gonna go back to, to zero. You have to get the needle loose enough to where it's on zero before you push it in. All right, now we're right at zero. All right, so Let's go back up to 400 hertz and see where we're at. Went a little too far past it there, but let's see how close we are. Oh man, look at that, we are right almost right on it okay so let's go ahead and adjust just a little bit okay went a little too far now you want to try to look at this straight on because if you look at a little bit of an angle it could be off just a little bit all right we're right on 6,000 rpms now let's go back down to 100 which is 1500 RPMs and see where we're at. Yeah, we're a little bit less now, but we're right at about 100 RPMs. So for me, this would be just fine. And I would let it go right here. That way we're accurate on the top end and we're really close on the low end. So now that our tachometer is calibrated, it is time to go ahead and disconnect it and reinstall it into your Corvette. If there's any questions, please call your Zip salesperson. Thank you.